Right, good morning everyone. As I've been introduced, I'm Tanya Kamashu. I'm a lecturer here um, in the Department of Physiology Division of Biokinetics and Sports Science. Um, our degree falls under the School of Medicine and um, I'm both a lecturer as well as a registered biokineticist. So my talk today is obviously going to come from two caps, but I'm very, you'll see I'm very passionate about what I do. So because um, I'll be talking about two different professions that the B-Sports Key program can prepare you for. I'm going to try and make this as quick as possible. All right, so the B-Sports Key program is a three-year program which then leads into an honours, pro an honours degree in either biokinetics or sports science. So it, pre it prepares you for one of two professions. Okay, so I'm going to start off with, with biokinetics. Okay, so what is a biokineticist? Biokinetics, firstly, is probably one of the younger professions out of all the healthcare professions. It hasn't been around as long as many of the others. But what a biokineticist does is promote health and prevent um, illnesses or conditions, all right? We're also highly involved in maintaining physical abilities and very much involved in final phase rehabilitation. Okay, final phase rehabilitation being anything from an orthopedic condition right through from a cardiac, pulmonary, diabetic, etc. Okay, we are a profession that is registered with the Health Professions Council of South Africa and we are governed by the Biokinetics Association of South Africa. So we've got a board that governs us as well. What does a biokineticist do on a day to day basis? Well, there's basically two things. Okay, we um, do individualized scientific assessments, all right, as well as then from the results we attain from our assessments, we then do rehabilitative exercise prescription. And because we can see a variety of people, from the little ones right through to the elderly, from individuals which are healthy, um, to individuals which are not so healthy, maybe with a cardiac condition, an orthopedic problem, um, spinal cord injury, brain injury, etc. We are trained to do an array of scientific assessments so that we can choose which one is the most appropriate to assess our patients so that we can prescribe the most appropriate scientific um, exercise program to help them. So you can see on the screen, there's a whole lot of different examples of um, pictures that I've put up. You can see we do stress, we are trained to do stress ECGs, we are trained to do pulmonary function tests, we are trained to do graded exercise tests, um, we do body composition tests, we do various orthopedic assessments. So yes, we are pretty comprehensive in terms of what we can and cannot do in terms of scientific assessments. Um, as I've mentioned briefly, who do we work with? We can start, we can work with the little ones, we can work with the elderly, we can work with patients with spinal cord injuries, we can work with patients with cardiac or diabetic conditions which are recovering. Um, we work with orthopedic injuries, um, sports injuries, um, one of the modalities that we work a lot with is hydrotherapy, so especially for patients with chronic pain, arthritis, um, joint replacements, etc., we do movement therapy, so exercise therapy in the water. So these are just a few of the things that we do. Okay, so like the others have mentioned, what type of personality, what type of characteristics or qualities do you need to have to become a good biokineticist? And you'll see with all of them, we're going to say you need to be a caring, compassionate person. You need to be a people person, all right? But most importantly, you need to be extremely passionate about human movement because that is your primary modality of therapy, human movement. And not only human movement in the sense of the anatomical or structural part of human movement, yes, that is very important, but you also have to be very passionate about the physiology behind human movement and how that can help and tra help treat people. All right. You need to love um, 
problem solving, putting puzzle pieces together, be a critical thinker, because at the end of the day, because we're involved with final phase rehabilitation, we need to always come down to what is the cause of this problem so that it doesn't happen again. All right, so we need to make sure when somebody goes back into sport, for example, that we have corrected the mechanical or the movement issues that have resulted in the injury in the first place. You need to be a lifelong learner. Like I mentioned to you, it's a young, dynamic career. It's very popular. It's continuously being researched. New um, research is coming out. So you need to be somebody who's curious and wants to know more. Right, so a lifelong le learner. Another very important um, quality is to be a collaborator. Collaborator meaning we work in a multidisciplinary sector, so we work with physicians, we work with dietitians, we work with physiotherapists, occupational therapists, we work in a team. So you need to be somebody who's willing, who's a team player, a collaborator. Okay. Um, before I start with sports science, where would you possibly find yourself working one day? So definitely in the private sector, multidisciplinary um, medical centers, final phase rehabilitation centers. Um, the South African Armed Forces has a very big biokinetics um, sector as well. We um, are also found a lot in the corporate sector. We've got uh, big biokinetics um, Setups at BMW, for example, um, they now expanding to Mercedes Benz. Okay, Very, a lot of banks. Okay, um, and of course, you can obviously work in the health and wellness in industry as well. Okay. With regards to sports science, what is a sports scientist? Okay, so what do we prepare you to do then? Well, a sports scientist is, is exactly what the word says. You're a scientist who then applies science to sport, okay? So at the end of the day, a sports scientist's ultimate goal or outcome is to improve human performance in a sporting context, all right? Whether it is on an amateur level or whether it is on an elite level, the ultimate goal is to improve performance. Okay, and how do they achieve that? They achieve that through sports biomechanics, so looking at movement, okay? They do it by applying physiological principles to the sport, okay? So how does their heart, um, their, their lungs, and et cetera, respond to certain stresses in sports, and then based on that, they work out specific training programs where they work in certain zones to optimize um, performance. Another, another big principle that they use is strength and conditioning. Strength and conditioning is obviously really important because they don't want to get the athletes um, injured. All right, that's their primary goal is to prevent injury. Um, so strength and conditioning is a big, big component of sports science as well. Again, I've put some illustrations um, up on the screen so you can see what, a da what the sports scientist does day to day. You're not only in a gym, for example, but you're also out in the field, in the pool, taking lactate uh, measures from the ear, or you're in the labs doing um, ECGs, stress ECGs, etc., on them while you are physically stressing them to their maximum. So it's really, really an exciting um, environment to work in. All right, where can sports scientists find, or where do, we, where do you find sports scientists? Well, sports scientists will be exactly where it is, in the sporting environment. So you'll find them working with teams or individuals. Again, as I mentioned, a lot of people think it's only on an elite level. No, you find sports scientists in schools, helping um, you know, young children get better and eventually fulfill their dreams of becoming good elite athletes. You find them on the amateur level, grassroots level. So anywhere where the science of sport can be applied, you will find them. Okay. So schools particularly are, are becoming quite a popular environment for sports scientists. All right, what type of personality or quality traits would you have to be? You have to be a competitive person because at the end of the day, you want your athletes to be better than the next team's athletes, okay? So you have to be competitive, open-minded, again, a critical thinker, a lifelong learner, all right? You need to have high standards, 
Okay, you have to be very organized and also very important, you have to be a collaborator. A sports scientist does not work on their own. They work with coaches, they work with sports physicians, they work with sports physiotherapists because they all work together to enhance performance. Okay. So what does the program entail and what does it look like? So exactly what you see on your screen is the layout of how the, pro the program progresses. So it's a three-year program. Um, and it's a B Sports Key program. At the end of the third year, you um, attain a degree in B Sports Key. However, that's not where it ends, okay? You can then apply to be selected into one of the two professions I've just spoken to you about. So you can apply to either go into a BSc Honours in Biokinetics or a BSc Honours in Sports Science. Okay, during those, the, the BSc Honours um, years, it's not only an academic year, but it's also a year that you need to fulfill your first year of internship for the Health Professions Council of South Africa, and this is particularly for biokinetics. All right, once you've qualified and have your BSc Honours in Biokinetics, you have to do another year of internship at an accredited Biokinetics practice within South Africa. And only once you've done that can you then register with the Health Professions Council as a registered Biokineticist. So in other words, it takes you about five years to become a registered Biokineticist and four years to become a qualified sports scientist. And of course, if you then have a passion to continue your academics, which we always, always try and encourage, and you would like to pursue um, the, your studies, you can then do an MEC in either or, as well as a PhD. Okay, so most of the biokineticists working at the University of Pretoria have a minimum of an MEC. Okay. I, on, um, on the screen, you'll also see what the entry requirements are. I think they're going to be spoken about in more detail later, but this is something that you need to keep in mind. We do fall under the School of Medicine, so the entry requirements are pretty strict. Okay. Um, we look at first and second choice applicants. So where will most of your classes be? Classes will be primarily at the sports campus, I think the best campus, it's the quietest, it's the most beautiful, but you will also have some classes at the Hatfield campus. Okay, Our classes are not only inside four walls, but they're also outdoors, so you get a bit of both worlds. Okay, It includes practicals from the first year already, and obviously the practicals become more um, more specific as the years progress. Um, our classes are very interactive, so we like to engage critical thinking amongst our learners, because at the end of the day, that's what the profession is all about. Um, the learners are involved with the Health Sciences Fun Day, they're involved in a lot of the tech sport events as first aiders, um, so there's a lot of practical as well as academic interaction in our program. A big component is um, learning through experience. That's how we find our students learn the best. So we give them the theory and then we help them apply it through learning through experience. So they go out to the different clinics. They go out to the UP Biokinetics practice. They go out to BMW, like I've just spoken to you about now. They go out to the military hospital and work with the soldiers there. Um, they work at the Center of Diabetes and Endocrinology. So we take them out into the community and we let them learn through experience, obviously under supervision. Okay. But it's not all hard work. Through the whole process, we like to say many of the biokineticists out there, whether once they're done, they still remain lifelong friends. Studying is probably the best networking platform. And as you can see, lots of happy smiles and students that are thoroughly enjoying what they're doing. So if I have to conclude and mention one last thing, if you're interested in either or biokinetics or sports science, yes, you need to be a people person. Yes, you should want to help others. But most importantly, you have to be passionate about human movement. Okay, 
Yes, our contact details, you're very welcome to call our division and come and speak to any one of the lecturers there if, um, should you like more information. Thank you.